we think we're protecting ourselves, but we can inadvertently cause so much hurt for the people around us, punishing them in turn for a wound that we suffered decades ago. I recently read an amazing book by Robert A. Johnson. It's called He understanding masculine psychology and it's a short read but i found it fascinating he maps out the story arc if you will of male psychological development using a version of the myth of the holy grail as its under underlying narrative now one thing that really struck me was the author's belief that every man carries a core psychological wound from their childhood the healing or overcoming of which becomes like a secret quest throughout their life. These wounds often come about as a result of being punished in some way for something that we believe to be a positive. For example, if our parents got angry and dismissed us when we came to them for affection. This can create a shame bind in our psyche where we know a behaviour to be positive, but the shame we feel in relation to that completely stops us from being able to act it out. Now, most of us likely have many such moments in our childhood, irrespective of our gender. For me, one that stands out took place a few weeks after I moved schools around seven or eight years old. Before that, I was a happy, energetic kid full of love for everyone. And one day we went on a school trip and I was running around, so excited, hugging and kissing everybody. And one of the boys called me gay and I didn't even know what that meant, but it became the seed of bullying that I suffered for the next 10 years. I became a social outcast, punished for doing something that I believed to be good. Now, in therapy, just a few years ago, I finally started to realise the damage that this moment had done. Throughout my life, I have battled with ongoing self-esteem issues, too ashamed to fully express my affection, wary of compliments, while simultaneously desperate to connect and open up. There have been times where I have managed to fully surrender and be seen, but often I ended up getting even more wounded in those moments, burying those parts of me even deeper. And no doubt many more times when I've ended up hurting others because of this. So you see, shame sits in the realm of our shadow, which is all the parts of ourselves that we can't bear to look at, that we don't want to accept. And it means that the consequences of our reactions from this place can also reside outside of our conscious awareness. So. When a person or situation gets too close to our shame, we react like a wounded animal, we react for survival. And this is when fight, flight, freeze, fawn, all the tra trauma responses kick in. From our own point of view, we are purely acting from self-preservation, protecting ourselves from being hurt. But in those moments, we become blind to other perspectives and we can't see how our responses can hurt other people screaming or attacking our partners and then blaming them for making us feel like that, stonewalling and shutting people who love us out completely, or hitting the eject button and leaving the situation, even the entire relationship. We think we're protecting ourselves, but we can inadvertently cause so much hurt for the people around us, punishing them in turn for a wound that we suffered decades ago. So when our partner shuts down when we bring up a difficult conversation, or a friend belittles our success, or a family member who loses it when we beat them at a board game, many of these kinds of reactions can be caused by unhealed shame. When we say hurt people hurt people, this is exactly what we're talking about. And the sad thing is, the people who have hurt us the most quite possibly aren't even aware of what they did and the pain that it caused us. That's why this is such important work committing to heal our own buried wounds so that we don't inadvertently pass our pain on to those who love us. For the 18 months that followed my breakup from my girlfriend, my dad and I also had a particularly strained relationship. It had never been quite as close and free flowing as I would have liked, but this time was particularly difficult. I was in a lot of pain and I was doing everything I could to straighten myself out. And one of the things that kept coming up for me was around unexpressed anger at my dad for not being there as much as I'd have liked when I was a child. Now, I believed that a lot of my challenges now were at least in part due to not having a better male role model and support when I was growing up. So I took my dad out for lunch and I confronted him about it. And 
I wanted him to understand and feel my pain and I wanted him to take some responsibility for it. Now, I tried to do this in the healthiest way I could. I told him in advance that this wasn't an attack and there were some things that I felt that I had bottled up that I needed to get off of my chest. But when my dad tried to respond to me, he froze up. He was stumbling over his words and his thoughts were all over the place, which then made him angry. And in that moment, I realized that he was stuck in a trauma response because I'd gotten close to some of his buried shame. When our minds kick into a trauma response, we're psychologically returned to the childhood stage of development of when we were first traumatized in this manner. If we went through a traumatic experience and survived, our minds say the actions we took almost like a pre-programmed script that it can recall whenever we get into a similar situation. Now this is literally a survival response, so it's a way for our minds to make us react on autopilot with a proven behavior that has worked in the past insofar as we survive the situation. So a freeze response may have saved the life of our ancient ancestors to avoid being seen by a passing predator, but in that moment, my dad also experienced a freeze response because I'd gotten close to his shame around not doing something he felt like he was supposed to have done. The other side of this, which I find even more fascinating, is not long after that, I realised that all the anger and frustration I had towards my dad was actually because there were traits I could see in his behaviour that reminded me of my, of my own actions that I saw as contributing towards my breakup. I was so ashamed and disgusted in my actions for not speaking up about my needs, for not being strong enough, that I couldn't even bear to look at them in myself. So I was projecting them onto my dad and expressing my anger at him instead. I was using him to externalize the parts of myself that I couldn't accept. Now, we are all doing this all of the time, projecting the negative traits that we're all ashamed of, as well as the positive ones that we can't fully accept onto people around us. So when we fall in love, we're often falling for this idealized fantasy that we project onto our new partners, subconsciously wanting them to embody all the traits that we admire but are too, too shy to own in ourselves. And when we fight, we do the same, blaming each other for actions that we suppress. For a long time after I split up with my ex, I blamed her for shutting down on me and not being more supportive when I needed her. But I'm now able to look back and see that I was not communicating what was going on for me either. I'd rationalise it to myself that it was a noble action, not wanting to burden her and needing to be strong. But if you're not communicating and being honest with each other, how can you connect and build intimacy? It's not easy to confront ourselves and take an honest look at the way that shame might be working under the surface in our own lives. None of us want to hear that our actions might have inadvertently caused significant pain to people we loved. But by learning more about this and finding ways to share and work through it with our loved ones, we find a fast track path to deep healing and even deeper intimacy. One of the best practices, and this I learned from working with my own coach, is to spend deliberate time with someone close to you who you deeply trust, where you voluntarily share as much honest detail as you can about your own moments of shame. The more intimately you know this person, the better, because the risk and discomfort you will feel in sharing your shame is the exact defense mechanism that we want to release. But please remember, this is vulnerable, so make sure that this is someone you completely trust and feel safe with. Now, the core of this practice, which is so powerful in any moment of interaction, even beyond this exercise, is for the other person to remain completely present and attentive, listen to every word you say and remain with you. No judgment or fixing, simply to be there while you express your deepest pain and still accept you. It is so incredibly healing to be fully heard, understood and accepted by another human being while we, were, while we are at our most vulnerable. So you can take it in turns to share and listen and this vulnerability and presence will bring you even closer together. Shame and other negative emotions are stored as tension in our bodies and I've experienced massive physical release when I've expressed my shame like this. It's like the relief of no longer having to hold on to this buried secret we've hidden from the world releases huge amounts of blocked energy back into our system. The weight is lifted and we can finally move freely again. There's a lot to take in here, but I would love for you to spend some time absorbing it fully and thinking about how you might bring a practice like this into any of your relationships.
so much of the damage that we do to each other is because of misunderstanding and poor communication, making assumptions that are often fueled by this unhealed shame. And this practice can provide so much healing to you and your loved ones and bring you closer together at the same time. Thank you for watching. If you try out this practice, please tell me how you get on in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. And if there's anything else you'd like me to talk about, then let me know and I'll see you next time.